Superintendent uh, Chang. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alex Tracy. I'm the principal at Clareville Junior School. I'm thrilled to be your host. Thank you for joining us for this evening's webinar. On today's webinar, we will be covering the following, welcome and introductions, how to participate and ask questions during the live webinar. We'll be talking about elementary alternative schools, the online application process, offer acceptance and confirmations, and available supports. Before we begin our presentation this evening, it is important to acknowledge the lands which we gather. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas, of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. I would like to welcome Associate Director, Mr. Audley Salmon, and System Superintendent, Mr. Peter Chang. While Peter Chang and Audley Salmon will take center stage, it is also important to recognize those working behind the scenes. I would like to thank Anna, Superintendent Chang's administrative liaison, as well as Dan from our communications department for helping with today's Q and A's behind the scenes. At this time, Associate Director Salmon, would you like to say something? Thank you, Alex. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to find out um, further information around our elementary alternative schools and programming. We know that this is a really, really important decision in the lives of our young learners and your, and your children. So we want to provide you with as much information as possible so that you're able to make informed decisions. Once again, thank you so much for being here this evening, and we look forward to um, hearing your questions. I'll turn it back to Alex. Thank you. Thank you, A.D. Uh, Salmon. I want to ensure that each of you has the opportunity to actively participate and have your questions addressed by our host. To pose a question, it's a simple process. Step one, type your question in the Q&A box, then click the send button. It's as straightforward as that. Your questions and interactions will shape the direction of our discussion this evening. Thank you for your active participation and let's get those questions rolling. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent, uh, System Superintendent, Mr. Chang. Thank you very much, Alex. And again, good evening. Elementary alternative schools are TDSV schools, kindergarten to grade eight, in which flexible learning methods are utilized in diverse learning environments. Alternative schools are characterized by the different pedagogical methodologies, choice, inclusion, and flexibility. How do you find the Elementary Alternative page, Alternative Schools webpage? Well, as you can see on the screen, there are a, a couple of ways that you could approach it. If you go to the TDSB homepage and click on Find Your School, and on the left-hand side, you will see the links, Elementary Programs and Alternative Schools. Click on Alternative Schools. When you press on either of the buttons on the left-hand side, you will be taken to these locations. Within these spaces, you can get some of the general information about elementary alternative schools. On this page, you'll see some of the key information pertaining to the application process. As you see on the screen, Online applications will be open once we return from the holidays on Monday, January the 8th at 9 a.m. Then the application process will close promptly at 4 p.m. on Wednesday, January the 31st. This window of time will allow families a time to visit some of the open houses and information nights that are also being held in January before you apply. The red arrow indicates where the online application can be accessed on January the 8th. That web page will also have the important dates for the application process. We will share these dates with you at the end of this webinar. And finally, the blue arrow is the email address for families who have questions that were not answered by either this webinar or th through the frequently asked questions document. You can access that you can access that webinar to ask any further clarifying questions. Elementary alternative schools have two main entry points. 
Some of the elementary alternative schools are kindergarten to grade six, while others are kindergarten to grade eight. All of these, all of these schools, the entry point is at junior kindergarten. Our other elementary schools are grade seven and eight schools in which students enter at grade seven. You'll see that entry points for junior kindergarten are on the left-hand side, those are the schools. And on the right-hand side are the grade seven schools where the entry point starts at grade seven. Before submitting an application, students and parents, guardians and caregivers are encouraged to attend all the relevant open houses and open and the information nights to learn more about the schools and their programs. Visit the website that you see on the screen and is also available to you from our other website for details about the dates and the times. Interested families are encouraged to learn about each school's educational philosophy and, and distinct pedagogy. This information will also be available on the TDSB and schools websites. Parents, guardians, and caregivers requiring support or do not have the technology, have access to that technology, please contact your child's current school for support or contact us at this email address. It's important to note that if a student wishes not to continue in an elementary alternative school, they must return to their designated school by address. Another important piece of information is that transportation is the responsibility of the applicant. It is not offered in an elementary alternative school. Finally, and it's not noted on this slide, but we just wanted to reassure you that this is not a first come first served base, first come first served based application. An application accepted on the last day, in other words, January the 31st, will be considered the same as one received on the first day. Then the random selection process will be implemented for the placement of all applicants at these elementary alternative schools. The central admission process was established to recognize that students in elementary alternative schools collectively are not represented in by in, are not representative of students in most TDSB schools. To increase to increase access to elementary alternative schools for students from underrepresented communities, priorities have been established to address the disproportionality. As part of the TDSB's multi-year strategic plan and the six guiding principles and in keeping with the board's commitment to truth and reconciliation, applicants who self-identify as First Nation, Métis, or Inuit peoples, and who are TDSB students or live in the city of Toronto, will be admitted prior to the placement of other applicants. Sibling applicants. Applicants with a sibling remaining at the selected alternative school for the upcoming school year will be admitted prior to the selection of other applicants and after the placement of students who self-identify as First Nation, Métis, or Inuit. Then, after the placement of Indigenous students and, and applicants with siblings, 25% of the remaining spaces at every grade where spots are available in each school will be allocated to the applicants who are current TDSB students and self-identify in one or more of the following categories. These categories are provided uh, for you on the screen. I encourage you to read the detailed description of disability from the Ontario Human Rights Code, which can be found on the various elementary alternative schools application web pages, as well as on the form itself. In the last slide, we talked about priority three students, those students who were underrepresented in elementary alternative schools. For the students from the priority three category who were unsuccessful at getting a seat offer at that stage, 
will be combined with the students who are in Priority 4 for the remaining spaces. Non-TDSB applicants whose parents, guardians, caregivers' primary residence is the City of Toronto will be considered for placement next if spaces are available. Applicants whose parents, guardians, and caregivers' primary address is outside the City of Toronto and reside in the province of Ontario will be considered for placement if spaces are still available. This year after community consultation, there are some changes to the admission process and application form that we wanted to share with you, as well as other features that have been kept. First of all, gender was removed from the application form. It is no longer a field required to complete the application for an elementary alternative school. Next, the number of school choices remain at two again for this year. Staff will review this after this year to determine if it, if it will continue in future years. Number three, there was a desire that schools be ranked as primary and alternate choices rather than having those choices selected randomly. Whereas having a primary choice is mandatory, it is your option to select an alternate school. Folks, I want to stress, please give these school choices considerable attention. Because schools are now being identified as primary and alternate, the random selection process will place students based on the primary choice first for all priorities, and then place the students who chose a school as an alternate choice. So give it as much th thought as you can. Information about child cares will be, made will be made available on the website. Please note that admission into a child care in the same building where the elementary alternative school uh, resides does not mean admission into an elementary alternative school. Conversely, admission into an elementary alternative school does not mean admission into a child care. These are two separate processes and, infor and more information can be available to you um, from your local school, or you can ask us at the email address. There are very limited seats available in other grades besides the entry grades of junior kindergarten and grade seven. Applicants will be permitted to apply for the other grades and if there are available seats available, if there are available seats in these non-entry grades, applicants will be entered into the random selection process. If there are no seats available in these non-entry grades, the applicants will be contacted before the random selection process is done and informed that they will not be entered into the random selection process. So you would know we would be in touch with you after January the 31st, but before the first round of the random selection process. The prioritization of underrepresented students in elementary alternative schools remain in effect. To ensure that the minimum percentage for equity deserving students are offered seats, if the percentage goes below 25%, because some of the students offered seats may decline, then we will select the first equity deserving student from the wait list to ensure that the minimum of 25% is kept. And finally, as mentioned before in an earlier slide, applicants who have siblings already at the elementary alternative school and returning to the same school in September is given priority placement. In the last slide, I did mention again the how applicants, sibling applicants will be prioritized if they apply to the same elementary alternative school where the sibling um, currently is and returns in September. But I wanted to also stress that in order to ensure this priority, 
this alternative school must be selected as the primary choice on your application form, not the alternate choice. That priority will not be recognized if it's the alternative choice, alternate choice. The second nugget speaks to how each new applicant must have a separate application. In order to add additional um, applicants on the on your same um, application form, sorry, on the when you when you apply at the same time, once you have successfully submitted one elementary alternative schools application you will have the opportunity to begin another from the submission confirmation page after you've submitted, after you've completed the submission confirmation page. However, the one exception to this rule is with twins and multiples. In these cases, you should submit one application if you want to have, if you want to have the system consider the twins or multiples together. There is a space on the form to indicate that you that there other that there is going to be a twin or a multiple. Should this application be selected in the random selection process, two or more placements in the class will be taken. But again, we want to stress where space is available. Now, the scenario could be that if a space if space is not available to seat both twins or multiples, the system will randomly select one of them to be seated. The twin or multiple who was not selected or offered a seat will be placed on the waitlist. There is also the possibility that even though there are twins or multiples, perhaps you, they, your, your children do not want to apply as a twin or a multiple. And so, we then ask you to apply separately for each of the uh, each of your children. So individual applications should be submitted for each child, and then the regular random selection process rules were, would apply. In other words, if one child is chosen, and there were individual applications, the twin or the multiple is not automatically granted access, offered a seat or waitlisted by virtue of being a twin or a multiple. Now, we'd like to draw your attention to the different sections of the application form so you know what to expect in January. The following information will be required when filling out the online application form. The self-identification self section is completely optional and voluntary. However, if an equity-deserving applicant does not self-identify in one of the categories that we discussed earlier, then they will not be identified by the system as seeking that priority. We wanted to highlight again that you will have two school choices, a primary and alternate choice. And again, the alternate choice is optional. When completing the information about the siblings already at the elementary alternative school, this is another reminder to make sure that you select the school as the primary choice. At the end of the application form, there is an acknowledgement section that you will be required to complete in order to finish the application. Please read it carefully as it gives you the key information about the application process. When you see the online application form, you will note the small box that says required. You will not be able to complete the application without filling in these particular boxes. The good news is that you don't have to complete the application form in one sitting. The system allows you to save your information and return to it at another time. Please remember though, that all applications must be completed by the deadline of January the 31st at 4 p.m. After you have completed the application form, you will receive a confirmation email from this email address. Please keep this as a record of your application.
So now I'm going to move us forward in time to Monday, February the 26th, when you will receive an email with the, with the result of the application process. In the email, there will be a link. This link will take you to the results page. In this case, this graphic shows that your child has been offered a seat at a school. Your next step is to either accept or decline. Here's another scenario. And in this situation, the result is that your child is on the wait list at the primary school choice. Here, this applicant applied to a primary school choice and an alternate school choice. That's why you see two boxes. And these graphics will inform you of the waitlist position. These graphics illustrate an applicant who has been offered a seat at their alternate choice and is on the waitlist for their primary school choice. If the, seat, if the student was offered a seat at the primary school choice, then they would not be on the wait list for the alternate school choice, and, it would be, and they would be removed from the alternate school choice. So now I'm gonna walk you through six different scenarios and we thought it was important that you see these scenarios in a flowchart format so that you can see the differences between each and every one of them. And this would be due to the fact that once you receive the inf once you receive your offer or your results from the from the TDSB, um, you will need to make some choices. So here's one scenario based on what you have what actions you've taken. So scenario one, as you can see, is the applicant only applies to a primary school choice. And with that application receives an offer. What happens? Well, in this case, you have a, you can as, as we showed you in a previous graphic, the family can accept the offer. If the applicant decides to decline the offer to the, of the, to the primary school choice, then they will attend their designated school by address and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. In this next scenario, the application again applies to only a primary school choice, but does not receive an offer. Should that happen, then the family, the, the applicant will be placed on the wait list for their school, primary school choice. If a seat becomes available in placement round two for the primary school choice, then the student will be offered a seat. And the student can then choose to either accept or decline. Again, if the student decides to decline the offer, then they will attend their designated school by address and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. If a seat does not become available at the completion of the placement process, the applicant is removed from the wait list. Then the applicant will attend their designated school by address and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. Now, in these scenarios, we have applicants who applied to a primary choice and an alternate choice. An applicant receives an offer to their primary choice. What happens then to the alternate choice? The system will automatically remove the applicant from the alternate choice. So again, this scenario is two, two choices were, were made. And, a, and the a primary choice was there was a seat of being of, of being offered to the to the applicant, 
So the system is going to remove that applicant from the alternate choice. This is why we remind you again to be very considerate about which is your primary choice and your alternate choice. So when the primary cho choice is offered, the family can accept. And if the applicant decides to decline the offer to the primary choice, then they will attend their designated school by choice, by address, and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. Three more scenarios to go. In this case, the applicant receives an offer to their alternate choice and accepts the alternate choice offer. What happens then to the primary choice? So in this case, you'll see that the family who has been offered the alternate choice, you can accept the offer or you can decline, of course. The student, the student's primary choice, that student will be will remain on the wait list. After round two, if a seat becomes available in the primary choice, the family will be offered a seat in the primary choice and removed from the alternate choice, even though they may have accepted the offer. Because again, you indicated your primary choice is school green. Then the, the, the applicant can then accept the offer to the primary school choice. Or again, they can decline. If the applicant decides to decline, then they will attend their designated school by address and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. This scenario is similar, but there is a distinct difference. The applicant receives an offer to their alternate choice and, de and declines the alternate choice offer. What happens to the primary choice? Should the applicant receive an offer for their alternate choice, the family can decline. In the other scenario, the family accepted. Accept or decline, they will remain on the wait list for their primary choice. Then in placement round two, if a seat becomes available for the primary choice, the family will be offered a seat. The applicant can still accept or decline the primary choice offer. If the applicant decides to also decline the primary choice, then they will attend their designated school by address and no other offer to an elementary alternative school will be provided. One more. Here, the applicant receives an offer to their alternate choice and accepts the alternate choice offer. And in this case, wants to be removed from the primary choice because if they don't want to be removed, if they don't let us know that they want to be removed, then they would be on the wait list for the primary choice. Should the applicant receive an offer for their alternate choice, the family can accept it. And if they do, as I said earlier, they will remain on the wait list for this primary choice. If the family wishes to be removed from the primary choice, they will need to promptly email us at this email address and ask to be removed from their primary choice. Otherwise, if a seat becomes available in the primary school primary choice, the family will be offered a seat in the primary choice and removed from the alternate school choice. I know those scenarios may sound a little com complicated, but we wanted to share every potential scenario with you so that you can make an informed decision.
These are the important dates that are already on the website. The time between the closing of the applications and the first round of offers will be used by schools and central staff to review the applications for accuracy according to the student information system. You will note on this table that there are two rounds of offers, one on February the 26th and then the other on March the 1st. After the second round of offers are made, the admission process for elementary alternative schools will be complete. The waitlist will no longer be active and families will make school decisions based on that information. Thank you for your time. This concludes our presentation about the Elementary Alternative Schools Central Application Process. If you have any questions, please use the email address that you see on the screen and staff will try to respond within 48 hours. In addition, we are building the website to include an FAQ sheet, a frequently asked question sheet, as well as a video that will provide families with assistance on how to apply on the online application form. Those resources are being built as, as quickly as uh, tomorrow or, um, by, or Friday so that you have all the information that you need to make the most informed choices. Thank you so very much. And I, I now I will turn it over to Alex in case there might be some questions for us to field. Thank you very much, uh, System Superintendent Chang, for that very comprehensive overview of the Elementary Alternative School Central application and admission process. We do have some questions here. Uh, the first question, if we can't attend this entire session, will there be a way to access the recording later? Thank you for that question, Alex. And I apologize that we didn't mention it at the beginning of this session, but yes, these two recordings, the one that occurred yesterday at 1 p.m. and tonight will be available on the Elementary Alternative Schools website so that you can watch these videos um, and replay them for information. Just for your, uh, just for your, um, your viewing pleasure. But the two, uh, the two um, webinars are identical in terms of information. So you only have to watch one. The other thing that we're also going to provide on the webpage is the, is the slides that we've used for this webinar. So um, if you don't want to watch the webinar, but you want to have access to the slides, then they are going to be available to you on the web page. OK, so the, the next one here, it's more of a comment. Some of the schools have past date for open house. I think the participant is trying to say what happens if the open house is after the deadline of the 31st. So we've worked with the elementary alternative schools to ensure that there are no open houses after the deadline. Um, we know that many elementary alternative schools have open houses in January. We also know that some did have some their open houses in very late November and over the last couple of weeks in December. The principals of the elementary alternative schools will welcome you to their schools and give you tours if you contact them and make appointments. So by all means, please contact the schools, look at their individual websites for information and um, set up meetings with the principals and teachers so they get a chance to share their wonderful school with you. Okay. Next question, can we apply for someone who will be starting JK in 2024? If I understand the question correctly, the student who's going to be applied will, will be entering junior kindergarten in September of 2024 because that's age appropriate. Then yes, those are the students that where the most number of applicants will find seats as well as grade seven seats in the grade seven, eight schools. So um, I hope I answered that question correctly, but junior kindergarten is one of the main entry points. Okay. Uh, for children born in late December, when should they apply? That's a family choice. Um, students, we, 
most students enter school based on the school on the school age of their other child. So for example, if my child was turning four this year, I'm sorry, I'll, because it's December, I'll use next year. If my child was turning four in 2024, therefore probably born in 2020, then my child would be most likely entering junior kindergarten um, in September. That's that's that applies to almost every student. There are some situations where um, student children who are born September, October, November, December, please work with the local school to see if that is possible. And we, those are some uh, unique cases, and we're happy to uh, work with you on that if you have any specific questions about that. Um, if older siblings have bus service now, will new siblings qualify for bus service? There, elementary alternative schools do not provide busing. And so that would not be the case. Uh, whatever arrangements that the principal of an elementary school have might, may have made in some circumstances, that would be local decisions. But as I said earlier in my presentation, transportation is not the responsibility of TDSB for elementary alternative schools. This is a unique question. I have three quick three. I have three kids, grade five and grade two twins, all in one application. Um that's that is a unique question. So please ask me again. So yeah, so the participant has three kids. One is in grade five, and then grade two twins. So two twins that so sorry, twins that are in grade two. So three kids. So the grade five student would be applying individually because they're not applying for the same grade. And then the grade two twins can apply on one application. And in that grade two application, there will be a space where you can indicate that there is going to be a twin applying with that other child. Uh, why are applicants with siblings already in the targeted alternative school given priority? The, the, the information, the um, desire from the alternative schools community was to keep students families together where possible. And this is why siblings have been prioritized so that families can be together where possible in these elementary alternative schools. Uh, the next question, how do you confirm self-identification components given they are an advantage to entry, sorry, they're an advantage, they're an advantage to entry what stop gaps exist to prevent any uh, I think it is any manifestation, any application. So I guess they're trying to say what stop gap measures are there um, to verify uh, the applications? That's a really good question, Alex. And we trust our families to apply with their best information and to apply knowing that there will be follow-up at the school that's going to be receiving them. Um, so there is no check on the applications as they come in, because of course, every application is done with full integrity and full intention for the best for their student, for their children. So we are, we rely on the, um, our families to make the, the, the mess, the best, in, the best decision on how to apply with the information that they have. Okay, the next question, when you say primary school, it means just regular public school in which my kids get placed according to the home address? Yes, primary school are, are, are schools that, so in the TDSB, we have different configurations. Um, when we talk about primary grades, we're talking about grades up to grade three. Junior is of course, grades four to six. Grades seven to eight are our intermediate students. Those are all part of the elementary program. So when we talk about primary grades, we're talking probably about JK, junior kindergarten entry 
for the elementary program. And every student who lives in the city of Toronto, they are they do have a designated home address, which gives them access to their home school. Elementary alternative schools are considered central programs, which is why we are here tonight together to talk about how to apply through a central application form. Okay, and this is a, the next one is a very unique question. I am part of an organization that has been working for several years to sponsor a refugee family to come to Canada and settle in Toronto. Their child will enter the TDSB in September 2024, but they won't be arriving in Canada until after the lottery process is over. Can they participate in the lottery process remotely? Um, as I said earlier, in order to be eligible for the one of the six priorities, uh, you do need to, at the minimum, reside, have a home address in the province of Ontario. That would pr uh, pr allow you to apply as a priority six student. Most of our students who will be applying uh, will, will reside in the city of Toronto. And most will also be TDSB students applying for the grade seven program. And until there is a residential address that will, uh, for which that student will be using to apply, um, unfortunately, uh, this in this case, that would not be possible. Okay, the next question. How do out of catchment applications connect to alternative school applications? Uh, if you do not receive an offer for an alternative, uh, will there still be time to apply to out of catchment schools. I don't know if that's clear. I think I think that's clear. <laughs> it's scary to think that I know what you what, what you're asking. <laughs> um what I what I understand the question to mean is that you might be interested in applying for a school for out of area. So in other words, if you live in one if you live in one part of the city, perhaps you're interested in having your child um go to a school that is out of area. That's a different process from applying to an elementary alternative school. However, we were very intentional to align the timelines of the elementary alternative school process with the out of area process so that when the offers are made for one of our schools, or for one of um, or for the for an out of area school, you will ex you will receive those offers on the same day. And once you have that information, then you could choose which school you will ultimately be sending your child to. So two different processes, but at the same time, two processes that have the same timelines, so that information is will be coming to you and you can make the best decision in a timely manner. Hey, the next question. I apologize. I just learned about alternative schools and tried to look into an application for my child. Uh, for example, Claude Watson for the fourth grade, but the application is closed. Sorry, the application is closed. May I still apply or is it too late? What can I do to submit my child if possible? The website says that the deadline was November 31st. Thank you, Alex. One of the um, exceptional aspects of being TDSB is that we are able to offer different programs uh, for students who are making different choices for, for learning. I just talked about the elementary alternative school process and some uh, and the out of area process if you are looking for a school outside of your designated school address the third pro the third prom program that's out there is called the student interest program and that student interest program has already had their random selection process and offers of placement have already been sent to families so that process for example, Claude Watson is designated as a student interest program. Therefore, that pro application process and the offers have all been complete and they are working through making um, decisions for registration 
and um, class organization. This does actually bring me to an, a, a really good point tied to this. Let's say, for example, you are you you happen to be one of the successful families that um, accepted a, a spot right now at a student interest program. And just because Claude Watson was mentioned, I'll use that as the example. So if you accepted a spot for your child at Claude Watson for September, and then you apply for, for an elementary alternative school, and you accept a spot in an elementary alternative school in late February, then and you and you and you want your child ultimately to go to an elementary alternative school, then you will need to contact the Claude Watson program to let them know that you are declining their spot. So the two are tied that way, and um, we will do our due diligence to also check for you so that you you are not taking up two spots in at Claude Watson or at, um, at an elementary alternative school. Okay, so we have three more questions. Uh, will applying to an alternative school jeopardize a child's current placement in a French immersion program? Um, nothing jeopardizes anything. These are all opportunities for our students. If your child has applied for a French immersion program, that is again, your choice. If a child applies to an elementary alternative school and gets a spot in a French in, in an elementary alternative school, you will then need to make a decision on which program you want to enter your child into in September. So one doesn't jeopardize each other. Uh, we are offering opportunities for families to make selections, but ultimately there is one spot for your child and you will just need to make the best decision for your child. So, Peter, if I may. Please. Thank you, Audley. Um, because if uh, you register, if you accept the offer from the elementary alternative school and September the 15th comes around and the student decides that they no longer want to attend the elementary alternative school, part of this question goes to, can they go back to the French immersion program? That is, so I do not have a fulsome answer to that question. Okay, because because part of that is in French immersion, we don't save spots. Ah, thank you. And that's part of what we want to make sure that, that you're clear. As Peter has said, you get a choice, but once the student has accepted and the school year has begun, the choice beca now becomes the school that you would return to is your School, home school by address, not the actual French immersion program. We don't save spots. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that, I, that we're clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Audley. Okay, the next question. How does a random selection process support identifying the students who would be the best fit for and benefit most from an alternative school program? Thank you. The best fit comes from the families who have done, who have visited the schools to, to see if they um, enjoy the experience and being in an elementary alternative school. One of the reasons why there was a, a request to have a central application process is so that there was a greater equity of access for anyone interested in going to an elementary alternative school. We wanted to open as many opportunities for TDSB students and Toronto uh, residents as possible. This is why the application process is randomized because we have heard from families that they wanted to have the fairest chance of entering an elementary alternative school. Mm. Uh, next question. What if I apply for my two kids, grade five and JK, in the same alternative school, and the child in JK gets selected for an alternative school, given higher probability, then the other kid will be given any preference for 
sorry, then the other kid will be given any preference for an alternative school or second kid continues to go to their existing school. Thank you. Um, and that, that question has come up before. And this is why we have been consistent with providing the same message. And as I said a few times in my presentation, the condition to be selected as priority two would be that the child's, your child who's applying, their sibling needs to be at the alternative school already and returning in September. That is the, um, that is the uh, definition of a sibling in this elementary alternative school process. So in, in your example, if you have different children both applying at the same time, they are both applying as two separate applications, but they're not in the sibling category because they do not have a sibling already at the school and returning in September. So although technically they're family siblings, of course, I, I get that, um, but they're not going, they're not meeting the criteria to be uh, considered as a priority two. Okay, um, this next question for children born in late December, when should they apply? My late December birthday question is basically, can you apply for two years? As I said earlier about the late December babies, um, there are, those are the choices that you can make. So I would suggest that you contact your, your local school to ask for clarity on that. But for most students who are applying for our, or entering a public school for the first time, they usually do it when they turn four in that calendar year. So it's December, it's January to December. But I've also said um, earlier that there are exceptions that can be made. And those are the um, exceptions that should be discussed with the local school or contact us at that email address and we can provide you with more specific information. Okay, so there's a couple more questions. Can you speak to the process for twins applying to the same uh, alternative school? What if one gets in and the other doesn't? Getting into um, a particular grade or at a school really just really depends on space. We did acknowledge that if there is a if you have a if you have twins applying, that they're they are encouraged to apply on one application. And then when they apply on one application, the system will tr will try to keep them together so that once if spaces are available, they will be seated together or they will be waitlisted together. But there might be a situation, and this has happened even last year, there might be a situation where when um, one of your twins does is offered a spot and there are no more seats available, then the other twin would be on the wait list. So what, there is no guarantee that the two would be offered a spot simply because one of them did get offered a spot. And that's because we do have class sizes that we must abide by. Okay, so we've come to the final question and it's more of a comment. Um, the process uh, described uh, disadvantages, new arrivals. I think the TDSB has to be more thoughtful uh, when it comes to ensuring the inclusion of those who are not yet uh, in Toronto. I, I completely appreciate that uh, perspective. We have um, done a lot of thinking around who the applicants are, and we are trying to be as inclusive as we can be. There are provincial rules around students who enter schools in Ontario. And uh, we have consulted with different staff members to make sure that uh, we are um, abiding by those rules. And this is why students who do not have an address or families who do not have a residential address in Ontario would not qualify to apply for an elementary alternative school. Well, thank you very much, uh, System Superintendent Chang. And uh, if, and if the participants have any further questions, 
You can also email the questions to eas.application at tdsb.on.ca. Um, Associate Director Salmon, did you want to say anything before we close the webinar? No, I just want to extend my appreciation for uh, the parents and families who were here with us this evening. Um, really appreciate the, the questions and we look forward to uh, being partners in education as we move forward together. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much uh, to all the participants who attended. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening and this will uh, close our webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much.